بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ تعالی وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام علی اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعین الحمد للہ with the grace mercy and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we continue our da'wah work to provide training and inshallah to train 12000 PIP life coaches over the next 10 years uh, on Islamic motivation coaching mentoring counseling and the new module module 5 Islam heart of love of how to use post Islamic psychology to transform the ummah to face the challenges of the 21st century especially the challenges of climate change the uh, challenges of social upheaval the challenges of uh, immorality the challenges of injustice starvation, oppression, uh, fascism, you name it, the whole gamut of challenges that we have to face that is not faced by our predecessors 1400 years ago. So what is important is for us to be able to live positively. So we have this Islamic psychology framework to transform the Ummah in the 21st century and this is our small contribution towards that. Eh? So I've explained to you that the transformation will take place from the perspective of our ubudiyah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing that we are a spiritual being living temporarily in a physical world so our actually real home from the rim of the rim of alastu birabbikum before we even existed on this plane we have a home and that home is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the rim of azali and then we are on, on this earth and then we will leave this earth uh, just like uh, every human being has gone through our forefathers, our great-grandfather, our first father Adam and Eve and we will go back to a spiritual realm. So our belief is a belief system based on the understanding of the nature of the permanency of the spirituality, not the permanency of materialism or physicalism. Eh? So that's why we have, it's important that in Islam we have to do research on consciousness, mind, body, heart, uh, heart, heart research and so on. So this new way that we are putting it to make contemporary contribution to the intrinsic truth of Islam. I remember this is not something newfangled and that's why I go back to the great scholars of Islam from the perspective of the tenets of Islam from my teacher's book and the uh, prolegomena of the metaphysics of Islam from Professor Said Nakib al -Attas. All right. The whole idea is that we progress from atheistic, materialistic civilization for humanity, Islam and all humanity, and then move forward towards a spiritual Muslim for Muslims, for full of Iman, Islam and Ihsan, practicing Islam and drawing the beauty, the love, the, the grace and the mercy of this deen to all humanity that they become attracted to follow the Islamic way of life. Whether they follow or not, that is up to Allah, but we show the best example of how to live in harmony. First, in harmony with the Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in harmony with ourselves, the nafs that Allah has created, in harmony with our family, our hierarchy, our community, our society, the global society, the universe, and so on. So this is the progression of civilization that we hope to uh, stimulate eh, and be part of this positive contribution towards a wonderful future for human beings, notwithstanding that within the next 10 years, we have to resolve our climate change challenges. If we do not move away from fossil fuel civilization, burning of coal, gas, uh, petroleum products and so on, plastics and all that not, we would then face the calamity where the carbon dioxide level hits 550 parts per million. At that level, the change will be so severe that temperature will rise more than 5 degrees Celsius and it will go to 8 to 10 degrees. At that point, there's no hope for humanity. Even though if a large batch of them, say, next 50 years, move towards Siberia and Greenland, now they are fighting over Greenland, who is going to control Greenland? Because they know all this rich, uh, super rich, they are not idiots. They know. They know this is this whole civilization is going to collapse. That's why they're now preparing to buy lots of places up there, up near the North Pole. All right. They are not stupid, but their 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 whole 
game of greed is the same play that causes destruction. So they think they can escape by moving up there? Most probably not. Maybe they have another 50 years, then the whole thing will just disappear out of this planet Earth and we become a hot house, mad house, that no mammals can exist, only maybe cockroaches, uh, bacteria or viruses only. But we have time, inshallah. So that's why we Muslims, I keep on repeating, can play a very pivotal role. 1.7 billion Muslims, if harnessed in the right direction in terms of positive Islamic psychology, we can transcend this sense of enmity between Muslims, non-Muslims and so on, and bring together the sense of we are one in this one good earth. Let's work together. Let's maintain our own deen, our own faith within the perspective of Islam. And they can maintain their way of life, even if they are agnostic or atheistic or they are Christians or Buddhists or whatever new religion, that new age religion and so on. By showing the best example, we will draw them in. Not by confrontation, not by conflict, not by cursing and swearing at other people, but out of the beauty of the deen, the internalization of the spirituality within our hearts, experientially understanding the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will reach that level. And every one of us had the opportunity in moments of contemplation, in moments of meditation, in moments of reflection, we will reach that sense of flow, that sense of oneness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that sense of ubudiyah to Him. So, I have given you the concept of Godhood. I'm going to expand this from this prolegomena of the metaphysics of Islam. All right. Uh, some more ideas from Professor Said Nagib al on this conceptual approach of Islam so that you have this fundamental because this is a muqaddimah. I'm not going through the whole book. If you go through the whole book, then you have to take a master's or PhD in philosophy yeah? or Islamic metaphysics or whatever, which you can do at ISTEC. You are invited to come to Malaysia and do at ISTEC. It's still open and there are a lot of international students and you have good discussions on that. But I'm approaching every one of you who are interested in understanding this beautiful deen that is so intrinsically perfect because it is revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'll just read through some of the material. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His creating is the bringing forth of ideal realities that pre-exist in His knowledge into external existence by His power and will. And these realities are entities that he caused to become manifest in his interior condition of his being and creating uh, his being. Uh, his creating is a single act repeated in an eternal process, whereas the content of the process, which are his creation, are non-eternal, being originated in a yet new, yet similar guises in discrete duration of existence for as long as he wills, uh, for a lot, as long as Allah wills. So, Allah creating is bringing forth of ideal realities that pre-exist his knowledge. So he has his pre-existent knowledge beyond space, beyond time, beyond form. He has this knowledge because Allah has this fullness of knowledge. Eh? And whatever external existence that we perceive is within the interior of his being. All right? His creating is a single act, repeated. That means he, when he ordered a an existence to be this whole universe for example is just one command in the Al-Quran Allah tells us whenever he wills this universe to being or anything that he wishes outside this universe or many universes or whatever that that we cannot perceive uh, Allah tells us innama amruhu is a rada'an shay'an an yakula lahu kun fayakun whenever Allah wills a thing he only needs to signal kun and it becomes so it is a process eh? which his creation are non-eternal, being originated in a new yet similar guise of discrete duration. So we have our duration in terms of our physical existence. We have our duration beyond space and time in the spiritual realm. But that duration within, with this beyond space and time, we cannot measure because we are not in that state now. What is that duration? Because in the state of spirituality, there is no space, no time. So if you say it's eternal, it's eternal. But at that point, that eternality is not linked to time. There is no time zone. There is no time parameter there. It is no more. It's a spiritual realm, and the likes of it is there are many 
uh, examples of uh, in the Quran al Karim about the realities of heaven, the realities of hell, which we must understand. And these are real, eh? but free from space, free from time. And our duration, even in the spiritual world, our existence is for as long as Allah wills. Okay? It is through revelation in which God has described himself, his creative activity and his creation. And, and this is where it is through revelation. That means we have this knowledge of understanding our existence on this earth, not by speculation, not by, for example, doing some quantum field uh, experiment and then we say, okay, this whole universe is made of quantum field vacuum and that vacuum has energy. Or we talk about, okay, we have mass, we have spin, we have the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson will give uh, mass to subatomic particles. All right? So it is uh, interface between matter and wave and so on. That, that is speculative. Even though it's scientific, but it doesn't give the intrinsic understanding that the truth is revelational. That Allah wills through His uh, command bestow this understanding to his selected being that means our Prophet Muhammad Wasallam and all the other prophets before him to understand the phenomena of existence on this earth eh? this interpretation entails the affirmation of realities and their devil, double nature consisting of complementary opposites their existential condition of permanence and change that means our existence is willed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to exist and annihilate. Now, this is within the framework of Ashari Kalam. Inshallah, we will go into detail as we have the time. We're going to wait. Now. Their double nature consisting of complementary opposites, their existential condition of permanence and change, their involvement in a continued process of annihilation and renewal by similars, their absolute beginning in past time and the absolute end in future time. There are limitations limitation to time and space and both are the result of the creative act that brings the cosmos into existence. So time and space, when Allah command kun, it, it came into as part and parcel. Just like we talk about the nature of consciousness, uh, the nature of the spirit, what is the roh and how it is manifested and so on. This is all revealed knowledge, not speculative knowledge, but it is consonant with rationality, it is consonant with all what is called the, the highest level of scientific understanding because now for example you talk about quantum field theory is very close to Kalam atomistic theory eh? so that inshallah we have the time we will explain to that that thing eh? change is not in the phenomenal things as that will imply the persistence of existence in things making them substrate for change to take place but at the ontological level of their realities in which they contain within themselves all the future state. So whatever our existing state, our future state is all uh, within Qadar and Qadar is within the will and the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is not ignorant of all the realities. The dual condition of realities involving permanence on one hand and change on the other presupposes a third ontological category in the interior condition of being. All right, so between external existence and non-existence, this is the rim of the ideal reality subsisting as permanently established entities in the consciousness of God. So, and they are none other than the forms and aspect of the names and attributes of God considered in their aspect of difference from Him. Islam affirms the possibility of knowledge that knowledge is the realities of things and their ultimate nature can be established by certainty by means of our external and internal senses and faculties, reason and intuition, and true report of scientific or religious nature. All right? And this is where we come, that we can combine revelation with scientific understanding. And Alhamdulillah, now with the study of consciousness, is getting very closer, uh, closer to Islam. Now they are more and more are uh, talking about the dual nature of existence as panpsychism. You have the universal mind and parts of it that contribute to the universal mind, uh, which is uh, they believe in a in a, uh, in a universal mind, but you don't want to use God. Huh? That is up to them. But a lot of them has embraced uh, the 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 knowing that basically 
the universal mind will then direct us to the absolute. That means the absolute, they, they call God, we call God. All right. So science is coming closer and closer to us through the science of the science of consciousness, the science of uh, quantum field theory and many other aspects in terms of information, uh, logarithmic theory and so on. And we Muslims must be confident of the nature of our existence, knowing that we are a spiritual being living temporarily in a physical world, being created for a purpose and meaning to be the steward or the Caliph of Allah on this earth, always striving to make ourselves good, helping others to be good and making the world good, inshallah.